What if I told you that many of the common beliefs about masturbation are actually myths? So in this video, we're going to talk about why self-pleasure is an important part of female sexual health. Let's start by going over some of the common myths. Myth number one, masturbation is uncommon or abnormal for women. The truth is research shows that masturbation is actually very common among women. In a large survey study, they found that up to 94% of women in the sample reported masturbating in the past 12 to 24 months. And this is similar to multiple other studies. And the median frequency of masturbation has been about once a week or once every two weeks. Myth number two, women only masturbate with dildos. Now, in a study that surveyed over 2,000 women about their masturbation habits, 97% of women masturbated using clitoral stimulation, which means they don't need a dildo for that. Only 45% used vaginal stimulation, meaning inserting something in their vagina. So 41% used erotic enhancements, which are things like maybe watching something or listening to something or using a mirror. And 39% used sexual fantasies. And that would usually incorporate fantasizing about one's partner. So no, they're not all using dildos. Very often they're using other things to help them masturbate or using their own hands. Myth number three, masturbation will replace a man. So when looking at that same study, when they asked women the most important reason for masturbating, less than 10% answered it was because of either lack of sexual activity with their partner or that their partner didn't want sex or that they found that sex with their partner doesn't satisfy them. In fact, women who masturbated more actually tended to have more partnered sex. And there was one exception, women who didn't have chance to have sex with a partner either because they didn't have a partner or their partner didn't want sex those women tended to masturbate more and have less partner sex but for obvious reasons right their partner is either not there or doesn't want it and even if they were unhappy with their sexual relationship with their partner when they masturbated more often they tended to still have more partnered sex so basically, for the majority of women, masturbation just makes up for lack of sex. It's not actually replacing it. And ultimately, women with higher sex drive had high rates of both masturbation and partnered sex. So women want both. Myth number four, masturbation is harmful or addictive. There is no scientific evidence that masturbation is physically harmful or addictive. In fact, studies have shown several potential benefits of masturbation. So what are those benefits? Masturbation can have positive effects on both physical and mental health. It can help with stress relief. Masturbation and orgasm releases endorphins, which can help reduce stress and overall improve mood. Masturbation can improve sleep. After orgasm, if you masturbate to orgasm, the relaxation after orgasm can help women fall asleep more easily. Pain relief. Some women even report that masturbation can help alleviate pain, specifically menstrual cramps or even headaches. And it can cause improved body image. By exploring your own body, you can actually feel like you have greater acceptance of your body and feel more confident sexually. And lastly, it can help with your overall sexual health. Regular masturbation is causing increased blood flow to the clitoris. Now, if you're not masturbating, that doesn't mean that you're not going to have a healthy clitoris. Your body will to mess the clitoris and de to mess the clitoris over the course of a nighttime. But masturbation is certainly causing increased blood flow to the genitalia, which is important and helpful for overall function. Now, I think it's really important to realize that every person's relationship with masturbation is unique. There is no right or wrong amount of masturbation. It really depends on how you personally feel about masturbation and what feels comfortable for you and what feels healthy for you. If you feel like it's not great, then it's not great because that's how you perceive it. And research has found that women who have more positive views on masturbation overall tend to be more comfortable with their bodies. 
feel more in control of sexual situations, have better communication with their partners. And conversely, women who view masturbation as negative often viewed their genitals as just belonging to their male partners rather than themselves, which can lead to negative thoughts about sexuality. So it's really important to develop a healthy, positive relationship with your own body and masturbation can really help with that. Myth number five, masturbating will make it difficult for women to orgasm during partnered sex. Now, when you look at orgasmic pleasure, it has actually been seen to be higher in women who are masturbating more frequently, who are older and have d less difficulty getting orgasms. And these women also tended to cite sexual pleasure as their primary reason for masturbating. So probably if you have a partner who enjoys masturbating for pleasure, then they're going to have better orgasms. Now there's with one exception, and I've talked about this before, if you are masturbating with a technique that is not able to be replicated by a partner, meaning you're using vibration, which can't be replicated by a mouth or a finger, you can't move that fast, right? And so in those cases, if that's the only way you're orgasming every single time, then it may be difficult to orgasm with the partner if they're not using a vibrator. Now that doesn't mean that you have to figure out how to orgasm that way. If you want to, sure, you can take a break from the vibration and see if you can train yourself to be more sensitive to those other types of stimulation. Conversely, you can actually have your partner bring the toy in the bedroom and use it to help you orgasm. And that can be a very pleasurable and fun experience. Now, when you think about orgasms, there's a higher rate of orgasmic difficulty in women who masturbate less frequently. Also in women who are younger, who tend to have less satisfaction with their sexual relationships, and they tend to masturbate really to decrease anxiety or sexual tension rather than for pleasure. Now it's worth noting that masturbation can vary from person to person, but in that study where they surveyed women about their masturbation habits, they actually were able to categorize women into three different distinct categories based on their habits of masturbation. Type one, which was about 731 women in the study, was women who are very sexually active, they often both masturbate and have sex with partners, and they really value sex. They're satisfied with their sexual relationships, and they have little trouble reaching orgasm quickly and enjoyably. Type two, which was 587 women, these women frequently have sex with partners, but they rarely masturbate. They generally value sex highly and they are satisfied with their sexual relationships, but compared to that first group, they tend to have a little bit more trouble and take a little longer to reach orgasm. And when they do, they find it a little bit less pleasurable. And these women tend to masturbate again more for stress relief than pleasure. And the last group was type three. These women tend to frequently masturbate, but they have sex with partners less often and they tend to place less importance on sex and are less satisfied in general with their sexual relationships. And these are the women who are using masturbation to really compensate for either less satisfying partnered sexual experiences and that's okay. Not every woman is gonna fit perfectly into one of these categories and you might find yourself in a different category depending on different phases of life. These are just general patterns, they're not strict rules, but ultimately it is sort of a way to think about how masturbation actually affects women very differently and is can be used in a variety of different ways, but it's never replacing a partner and it's never really damaging the person who's using it. All right, guys, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, you may want to check out my free ebook about better sex, better life. You guys know I have spent years dedicating my life to not only helping patients in the clinic get their best sex life, but trying to help you all get your best sex life. So I've compiled my top 10 tips for having the best sex of your life in this ebook, and it's completely free. So check it out in the description below and make sure you download a copy. And as always, we're going to take care of yourself because you're worth it.